Oof, it can be so annoying when FL Studio is lagging. Bops, clicks, crashes, all of it. Now, luckily, there's a way you can minimize this. Let me show you how. Trick number one, using Direct Wave. This thing can turn every heavy VST plugin into a lightweight sampled version. Let me show you. First, open up the plugin you want to sample. For example, Omnisphere. Right click it and choose Create Direct Wave Instrument. Find a location to save the Direct Wave file and click on Save. Now, in this window, you can choose a range of keys that FL can sample. Select the lowest note right here. For example, C2. Then set the highest note as well. For example, C2. C8. Now FL will sample all the blue keys inside this range. The other keys will be pitched up or down when played. If you want the samples to be more accurate, decrease the key per zone. You can actually see how much the size is going to be on the top right. If you want, you can also choose to burn in the effects on the master or the insert channels. When you're done, click on start. Now you have this super lightweight plugin that you can use instead of Omnisphere. Awesome, right? Trick number two, converting your MIDI files into WAV files. To do that, right click the track you're clip is on and find consolidate track then choose from track start when it's done you can remove the midi pattern and perhaps link the audio file to a mixer to further process it that is awesome. Trick number three, minimizing mixer CPU. Let's say we have five instruments and we want to put reverb on each and every one of them. Now don't put reverb on them individually. This way FL Studio has to load five effects at the same time. Instead, use another mixer track and add the reverb effect to that one. Next, select one of the instruments and head back to the reverb mixer. Then on the bottom, click the send icon. Now the instrument will not only go to the master, but also to the reverb track. With the knob at the bottom, you can control the amount. And surprise, surprise, you can do the same thing with the other tracks as well. Before we go to tip number four, I wanted to give you guys a free download. My friend at Mixelead gave me this infograph that contains years of music experience on one page. Powerful chord progressions, amazing scales, and a frequency cheat sheet that will help you create amazing mixes. Oh, and if you want to learn music production from the pros, you should definitely activate your free trial to the Mix Elite membership. So, Click the link down below. And now, trick number four. This is one you should already know, but in case you didn't, go to options on top and then choose audio. In these settings, make sure you have an ASIO driver selected. This will make sure there's an optimal connection between FL Studio and your audio hardware. This brings us to trick number five, increasing the buffer length. Especially when you're not playing live instruments, you can increase the buffer length a lot. This will give FL Studio more time to process stuff and that can result in no pops and clicks at all. Number six, using smart design. This will disable plugins that are idle and that will save a lot of CPU. To do that, go to the tools menu and then find macros. Then click on switch smart disable for all plugins. There you go, you just freed up more CPU capacity so that you can produce even more comfortable. And now that your PC can run FL Studio smoothly, definitely use the tricks right here in the video on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching. Goodbye.